Hey everybody, it's Jason Bloha with Ice Cream Fitness here. It's, it's time for part two of the Monday Q&A, but hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. And let's get into these questions. All right, the first question, gear talk, short ester cycle or long ester, which do you prefer and why? Back in my younger days, I messed around a lot with both. I generally prefer longer esters. I think short esters have their place in contest prep and drug tested athletes and for people doing shorter cycles, but I am generally a fan of very, very long cycles and I mean 15, 20, 24 weeks. So you compound that with the fact that shorter chain esters require you to inject far more frequently. They oftentimes require more alcohol to suspend them, so they burn more, they tend to have more PIP for days after the injection, and the fact that they often cost more per milligram because the production cost of making them is higher. So that being said, I think for, for most people who want to get into it, short esters are not really for everybody. For the majority, I think longer esters are better for the most part. All right, next question. What other factors of diet would play a role in weight loss if a calorie deficit is not working? If a calorie deficit is not working and the scale isn't going down, you are not in a calorie deficit. Now, you might have previously been in one and you've crashed your metabolism or something has happened to your TDEE or you're mismeasuring something. You have other issues you need to sort, but if you are not losing weight, you are not in a caloric deficit. You will either be losing muscle tissue or you will be losing fat. There's no way that you're going to maintain your weight for any period of time in a caloric deficit. It doesn't work that way. All right, next question. What is the fastest rate at which one should cut body fat safely without fucking up hormones if they're looking to get to less than 12% by June, July time? All right, I am generally a fan for non-enhanced lifters of doing very slow cuts. The exception being if you need to make a dramatic transformation and you don't mind paying the price hormonally for it, such as what I did for the transformation challenge last summer, but for most people, I would say, as I usually suggest, keep the deficit within 20%. A slow cut is going to be easier on your hormones. And if you go beyond a 20% deficit, you're far more likely to reduce testosterone, thyroid, and other hormones. So keep it slow, incorporate refeeds, and incorporate diet breaks, which all of that can slow things down a little bit. But in the long run, you will maintain a better metabolism and you will have better hormone balance as a result of it. All right, next question. Would you recommend any particular type of training for hypertrophy for males over 30? Does age play a factor, i.e. falling testosterone levels, etc.? All right, as a 36-year-old male, I can tell you that it does matter as you age. Not only your testosterone levels, but your connective tissue recovers more slowly. Now, I don't recommend a different type of training style. I think you can use the same routines that an 18 year old can use, but you need to pay more attention to your technique, to your deloads, your connective tissue, your joints. You need to watch for signs of problems and you need to deload accordingly and check your ego at the door. There's no reason you can't even train for maximum power well into old age. There are plenty of guys out there who lift tremendous numbers over age 50 without having injuries from it. but you do need to check your ego at the door. You need to pay very close attention to your form. And yes, you have to accept that the lower hormone production is going to equal less muscle growth. Without going on high dose HRT or going on to just straight up anabolic steroids, when you get over 30, you can't expect to make the same muscle mass gains that a 16 or 17 year old can make. But you can use the same style of training to get as much as you possibly can. Okay, next question. Is 10 sets of three reps enough time under tension for, for building muscle? Yes, absolutely. I, I actually advocate 10 sets of three. I think it can produce just as much hypertrophy, if not more than three sets of 10. Even though individual time under tension per set is lower, the overall tension time is the same for the sets. If you keep the brakes relatively short, you can induce almost if not as much metabolic fatigue, but you're going to get a lot more muscle fiber recruitment and you're going to move a lot more weight. And there's no reason you cannot 
make tremendous gains in muscle mass using that sort of rep and scheme protocol. All right, that's really all I have to say on those questions today. I will do another one of these for you guys later today. So I hope this has been informative and I will talk to you next time.